This is the Be Energy Wear podcast. Hello and welcome back. 2021 is here, and I'm happy to once again be creative and share the things that might help you live a better life. This episode is brought to you by Get Empowered Audiobook. You can find a link to this audiobook in the description of this episode. My guest today is Jen Broyles, a holistic health coach, Soma breathwork instructor, and essential oil specialist. In our conversation, among other things, we talk about the basics of breathwork, how to properly breathe, and why it is important to cultivate a daily breathwork routine. And at the end of our conversation, Jen also did a very special breathwork tutorial. So here we go. Yeah, so what I've noticed is on any given day, if I'm not paying attention to my breath, my day can go sideways. You know, I'm guessing it's because of all this external chaos that we're having um, these days and this year, throughout this year. So can you can you speak to that a little bit, please? Yeah, absolutely. I mean... First of all, the fact that you are aware of your breath is, is a major step because most of us are not, um, but, but it's true. You know, I think so many of us, myself included, before I discovered breath work and even as a health coach, I wasn't thinking so much about my breath, but it is really this one function that we have that is both involuntary and voluntary. And so the fact that it happens in the background under the influence of our autonomic nervous system, um, you know, it's the thing that's keeping us alive and we don't focus on it a whole lot. I think we oftentimes assume that if we're breathing, we're good, right? And, um, but there's so much more to our breath than just simply are you breathing? Yes or no. Um, and, you know, especially in this current state that our world is in right now, I mean, stress is heightened. There's certainly a, a, a lot more fear, doubt, uncertainty. And, you know, the breath can get hijacked by stress. And chances are for mo most people, even before 2020 it was already hijacked by stress, right? Because we live in a very busy, fast paced world where, you know, we have a million priorities and we have a to do list a mile long, and there's just all sorts of stressors and um, information being thrown at us all the time. And it throws off systems and functions in our body, our breath being one of them. And once the breath gets hijacked by stress, um, we begin to breathe erratically, irregularly. Uh, we breathe fast and shallow. Most of us only use 30% of our lung capacity. Um, and when the breath is operating under stress, everything else in the body and the mind is operating under stress too. And it just perpetuates this vicious stress cycle. So for anyone that is feeling anxious or stressed or sad or down or overwhelmed or any of these emotions, or you know, if you're dealing with chronic health issues, one of the big things to really look at is the breath because we can really influence our breathing and start to change it. That's the beauty of the fact that it is also under our voluntary control. So we can really tune in and start to breathe consciously. And once we know how to breathe properly, um, we can start to calm the nervous system. We can shut off stress. We can activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest, relax, digest, restore, heal, recover state that most of us are not in as often as we need to be. So it is a really, really powerful tool that we have available all the time if we just know how to use it. So tell us about you, why, why you became a holistic health coach and how have you discovered breath work in the first place? Yeah, so, you know, I think as is true for a lot of us that enter into the natural health world and become practitioners, um, you know, it starts out by us trying to solve either our own personal health challenge or that of a loved one. And that was the case for me. Um, at the time, I was experiencing 
some chronic digestive issues that I really ignored for years, just thinking they would go away. And as they progressively got worse and, um, and I started experiencing other symptoms as well, hormone related and just heightened stress and anxiety. Um, and so I finally, and this was, you know, 10 plus years ago, I finally started seeing doctors about it, um, really going the conventional medicine route. That's really all I knew. Um, that's how I grew up. And that's, really the the route that I knew and trusted in. I, at the time I worked in pharmaceutical sales, I, I I sold the drugs. I really believed that they were adding value. And I, I, I still feel that there is a, a time and a place for modern medicine. I think it serves us in many beautiful ways. But for me personally, as I was seeing all of these different doctors and specialists and undergoing a battery of testing and being prescribed all of these different uh, medications and not really finding any answers as to what was causing the problem and um, the medications not helping any. I felt like I had kind of reached the end of the road there and had to go a different direction. And so I started just doing my own reading and research. And I started with nutrition just intuitively. I was like, that's a place I felt I was, was a good place to start. And I dove into books on nutrition and that led me down um, the path to learning about functional medicine and integrative medicine and holistic healing and all these different modalities that I did not know were out there. And uh, it opened my eyes to this whole new world. First of all, everything I thought I knew about nutrition, I learned was incorrect. <laughs> and, um, and so I just realized there's this, there are all these other options out there and all these solutions that are natural and have been, been used for thousands of years or time tested. And um, it just kind of lit up this passion inside of me. And so I went back to school and I studied integrative nutrition and became a holistic health coach and, and started working with clients um, that were experiencing a lot of the same things that I was experiencing at the time and really helped them with cleaning up the diet and really putting together a food protocol that, that worked for them and, and helped them heal. Um, and then through all of that, I discovered other modalities like essential oils and um and then later on breath work and when i first heard about breath work i had no idea what that was i mean i knew i had heard of deep breathing and things like that that you do in yoga and stuff but i didn't know what actual breath work was and and it took me a, a it took me hearing it a few times to actually like tune in and say, okay, this keeps coming up. Like, let's pay attention to that. And so, so I did. And I was in California at the time and I just Googled local breath work and found a few classes and attended them and was just absolutely blown away by the breath work experiences that I had. I had no idea I could change changed so much about how I felt physically, mentally, emotionally through my breath. It was so powerful. And, um, and the more I, the more I dove into the practice for my personal benefit and healing, the more I realized this is what I want to share with the world. So I became an instructor and I just, I'm such a believer in the breath. Yeah. So in terms of breath work and if we're thinking about the proper way to breathe, what, what would you say to an average person that's just coming across breath work and, and starting to get more conscious about breathing? Yeah, so that's a great question. And, and I love just kind of posing, posing the question to the listener. Like if you're in a position right now where you can just take a moment and tune into your breath, and just observe how you're breathing. Like, don't try to change it. Don't try to correct it to how you think it should be. But just take a moment and tune in to how you're breathing naturally. And observe. Just come from that place of the observer um, and witness your breath. And once you know some of your patterns, then you can see kind of how we can start to fix it. So what I find, um, 
in a lot of people when I ask this question um, and, and they observe, so many people say that they are breathing in their chest. You know, their chest is rising and falling or their shoulders are rising and falling. Um, they're breathing fast. So kind of rapid, shallow chest breathing is, is very, very common. Um, in, in and out through the mouth is another common thing that um, becomes habitual through a stressed out state of breathing. Um, and then finally, one of the things I hear more often than not is when people do this exercise, they come back and say, oh my gosh, like I realized I was holding my breath and I did not realize it. You know, like once they tuned in, they were like, I hold my breath and I don't even know I'm holding my breath. Um, so those are some common things, some common breathing patterns that um, are signs that your breath has been hijacked by stress. Okay. And so how do we fix that? So proper breathing would be in and out through the nose. So nostril breathing is really, really important um, because it serves so many purposes. Breathing through your nose helps to filter and clean the air that you're breathing in. It helps to warm and moisturize the air that you're breathing in. And it also helps stimulate the production of nitric oxide, which is really important for fighting off pathogens that might be present. So it serves so many purposes to breathe in and out through your nose. And also breathing deeper from your diaphragm. So I mentioned that most of us only use 30% of our lung capacity because we're taking those very shallow uh, chest breaths. So we're only using like this upper portion of our lungs. But instead, if we start to really focus and breathe in from, from our belly, from our diaphragm. So really that abdomen, we want to see it expands when we inhale. Um, and, you know, again, this goes back to our culture today where, you know, for women, we want to have this super flat stomach and for men we want to have like this you know big buff chest what are we doing when when we are going for that look we are contracting we're contracting we're sucking in and that over time is not serving us okay so we really want to relax the belly allow it to expand when you inhale and that way you can really start to breathe in from the diaphragm and from all of your lungs. So you breathe in from your diaphragm and then up into the lungs and feel them expand, okay? So you get that deeper breath and you're breathing in through the nose. And when we breathe this way, we're naturally gonna be slowing our breath down because we're taking fuller, deeper breaths. So ideally, uh, we're breathing five to six breaths per minute, which if you were to time your breaths per minute, you're probably going to find out that you're breathing double that or more. Um, that's very common. So slowly breathing five to six breaths per minute in a consistent rhythm, um, in and out through the nose and from the diaphragm. That's an I, that's that's the proper way to breathe. Now, most of us are probably not doing that. And um, I mean, even myself, like I, especially when I get caught up in important, urgent tasks, or I'm having a stressful day, now I'm a lot more aware of my breath so I can fix it really quickly. But even now, like I go back to that default mode, which is, you know, how I breathed for years and years and years. So you're not going to fix it overnight. It takes time. Um, but the first step is that awareness. Soma breath work. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about Soma breath work? Yeah. So Soma breath work is one type of breath work. There's, there's many different styles and, and techniques of breath work out there. And I have personally practiced many different forms of breath work, and I find that they all are beneficial in their own way. But when I experienced this particular style of breath work for the first time, I just fell in love with it. Um, it was different than some of the other forms I had tried previously. And what I love about Soma is that it is, it's, it's rooted in the ancient traditions and techniques of pranayama and yoga. Um, so we're using techniques that have been used for thousands of years, 
before we actually had the science to prove and show their benefits. These ancient cultures just intuitively knew the benefits of different styles and ways of breathing on their overall health, um, their emotional well-being, but also like being able to tap into that spiritual connection. Using the breath is a really powerful way to do that. It, it really helps you get into a deep meditative state almost effortlessly. And, and so with Soma breath, so we're, we're using these ancient techniques, but we're combining it with some incredible beat driven music. Um, and I find the music, the music is a key part of this breath work. It's, um, it's, it just helps it, 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 it enhances the experience I find. And what I love about the music is that in most of the music that I use, there's either breathing sounds or counting or both built into it. So it helps keep you on track during a session. And so with this breath work, we're breathing in beats to, rhythm, to the rhythm of the music that's being played. And most of the breath work is this rhythmic diaphragmatic breathing. So we're breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And and we do that for several minutes to the beats and different different breath work sessions will have different beats of music. So sometimes you're breathing in for four and out for four. Other times it's a little faster, more energizing pace in for two and out for two. Um, and so we switch it up depending on the intention of the session. And then at the end of the rhythmic breathing, we go into a breath retention. So we hold our breath for a period of time. And I love this technique as well, because, you know, the rhythmic breathing, you're building up a lot of oxygen in the body, like you mentioned um, previously. And so, so you're, you're pretty oxygenated, right? Uh, which is great. But then when we go into this breath retention phase, um, since you've built up a lot of oxygen in the body, chances are you find that you can hold your breath for longer than you thought. But this serves a lot of purposes. Um, holding the breath, it's also known as intermittent hypoxia. And it, this type of intermittent hypoxic training has been used to treat a range of disorders, including high blood pressure, diabetes, Parkinson's, emotional disorders, and more. And what we're doing is we are lowering the oxygen in your body. So your body adapts to having less oxygen and it starts to become more efficient in producing energy. And then in this breath hold, we're also putting a positive stress response on the body, which through practice and consistency of doing this breath work is going to make you more resilient to stress. And I think that's one of the things that we all would love to have right now is not be so triggered and not be so affected by all the stress around us, right? So it's, you know, it's it's not about making the stress go away, right? You know, where the the stress, there's things we can do to, to definitely reduce stress in our lives, right? Um, there's certain lifestyle changes we can make and things we can say no to and all of that. But we also, need to become more resilient to stress so we can handle stressful situations better and maybe things that used to trigger us don't trigger us anymore and we can brush things off easier and let things go and the, these are all things that just help us live our daily life in a much more peaceful happy fashion and so we become more resilient to stress. And this is also a beautiful time where we can really access the subconscious mind. We go deep into a meditative state. We can start to reprogram imprints that may have been formed at any point throughout your life. Oftentimes it's early childhood that are not serving you any longer. They may be holding you back from being at your best and awakening to your full human potential. So we can start to bring in and call in the things that we want in our life. And so as we're doing the breath work, as we're breathing in this way, and as we're doing the breath holds, I, as an instructor and as a guide, I am, I am using visualization, I'm using affirmations to really help 
bring in and re-imprint um, the mind with more positive beliefs, um, repattern things, reprogram the mind. And so this is this is really a deep form of meditation. You know, I, I, I tell people, you know, if you if you've never been a fan of meditation or if you found meditation to be difficult, then you're gonna love breath work because it's almost effortless. Like it really gets you into that state so, so easily. And then if you love meditation and you're an avid meditator, then you're gonna love breath work because um, it's another powerful tool that you can use um, as, a, as a meditative practice. So I'm just curious, you work with people. And so what, what is their feedback? I mean, when, when they start doing it, how long does it take for, for a person, you know, to, to be able to, to see some, let's say, significant results? Great question. So people feel the results after one session. So what, what I hear after, after a session, um, I always ask for feedback after a session if people want to share their experience or their insights, anything that came up for them. Um, so I always get a lot of great feedback after every session that I teach. And some of the common responses are, um, oh my gosh, I feel so much lighter. I feel free. I feel blissful. Um, you know, I, you know, a lot of people come into a class feeling super anxious or stressed or just weighed down and they leave feeling like that has just all lifted and they are clear and focused, right? Um, like they just got a major reset. And some people feel, um, I've had people tell me they had an out of body experience, um, that they felt like they were floating, you know, um, uh, above the room or that they had this deep spiritual connection. Um, people use the words transformational and, um, and just, and blissful. You know, there are some sessions where, you know, depending on the person, the situation, the intention of the class, the type of meditation we did, um, sometimes emotions can come up. So the breath work is a powerful time to, again, release what's not serving us any longer. And that can be, you know, emotional imprints, emotional traumas, things like that. So sometimes during the breath work, people, they may not even have necessarily a memory, but they'll find that there's tears running down their face during the breath work. And they might not know why, but that's a really powerful form of release. So whether the mood is, whether they're feeling blissful and ecstatic and happy and joyful, or they just feel like they had a major emotional release and they shed some tears and either way they're people are feeling lighter, feeling freer, feeling liberated after a session. And so, yeah, it's amazing. Like I've worked with a lot of people that come to me for anxiety and this is a great tool for anxiety. It's a great tool for physical healing because what I found is a lot of chronic conditions if you've done everything else in regards to, you know, diet changes, supplement protocols, all of these other things, oftentimes there's some sort of emotional root underlying it. So if we can start to release some of that, that can be really, really healing. So across the board, I've gotten a lot of, a lot of feedback, but everyone wants to come back for more after a first session. And so while you can get a, a noticeable experience and result after one session, it really is in the consistent practice where you see the lasting results. So doing this on a regular basis. And of course, like when I work one-on-one -on -one with a client or if I do a group class, those are hour long sessions. So those are really, really deep, deep sessions. But for a daily practice, I recommend that people do, you know, 10 to 20 minutes a day of the breath work. And that's a great daily practice. And you'll find that as you do this consistently, not only are you, you know, really um, doing a lot of work mentally and emotionally, but you're also correcting your breathing too, which is really powerful. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm really curious. Is it just the breath work or do you use any, any other tools along with the breath work when you do sessions with people? Yeah, so I use a lot of other tools. Um, like I mentioned, I usually start off the class 
before we go into the breath work, we usually do a, a guided meditation. But even before that, I'll bring in um, other movement activities. A lot of times, like either stretching or dancing or shaking. And, um, and so these are really powerful tools to so just move the body, let the energy start flowing, start to release some tension. Um, shaking, if some of your listeners aren't familiar with that, it literally is just shaking your entire body. Um, and that is a powerful exercise to release tension, trauma, um, negative, I say negative in quotes because, you know, emotions are neither good nor bad, right? But some of the, if there's any sort of suppressed or trapped emotions, um, it can really help start to release some of that stuff that might be weighing you down. So shaking is a really powerful exercise. So sometimes we'll play music and just really shake the body out. Um, or we'll do some dance or just like flow or just or stretching just some form of movement to start to start to release any tension and tightness so we can have a deeper experience in the breath work. And then I'll go into, um, I'll have everyone lie down and um, usually do some sort of guided meditation, ranging anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes. And then we'll go into the breathing and throughout the breath work, I'm using visualizations, I'm using affirmations, I'm using like just positive language throughout to really help start to reprogram the mind and bring in more positive beliefs and habits and insights and and then I also like to use essential oils. And, um, and so this year I haven't been doing many in-person sessions, um, given what we're, what our world is facing right now. But if I have a client that I am either meeting in person or they have essential oils on hand, then I will recommend certain essential oils to use in the breathwork practice, because that can really help enhance the experience too, by just helping raise raise that vibrational energy through the use of the oils and depending on the intention of the breath work we can use specific oils to help cultivate that intention so for example if someone is working with me for anxiety or stress or mood imbalances things like that then we'll use oils that are going to help support that that are going to really help calm the mind so like floral oils like lavender or roman chamomile or ylang ylang or you know, oils like that, that are really calming and relaxing. Um, if, if the intention for the breath work is for energy and focus and mental clarity, you know, for maybe a business professional, then we're going to use some different oils for that. So the oils really help enhance the goal of the session. Tell us about your sacred breath community and how people can check it out. Yeah, absolutely. So I created the sacred breath community really out of feedback from some of my uh, breathwork clients who were saying that they really wanted an online community where they had access to online group classes on a regular basis and breathing tools and a place where they could get support and accountability. And that's really what the sacred breath community is. So it is a membership community um, all online. And it's really designed for people who want to learn more about breath work, how to do it, how to incorporate a breath work practice into your life. And, you know, as with anything new, creating a habit of it um, and a practice requires the right support and the tools and the accountability. And so, so I created this community to really offer something that was easy and affordable and accessible for people to experience the benefits of a regular breathwork practice and and so members of this community get access to live online breathwork classes every month they also have uh, downloadable audio breathwork meditations that they can utilize so these audio breathwork meditations are great for a daily practice. So they range from 10 to 20 minutes in length. And so it's super easy. You just, you can download them. You can have them on your phone. You can listen to them at whatever time of day works for you. And it just helps um, implement a good, consistent daily breathwork practice. And then there's also instructional videos of different breathing techniques that you can use for specific purposes and goals. 
great community and a lot more at a really, really um, amazing price point. So, um, so that's the community. If, if anyone wants to check it out, I would love that. Where can people connect with you? Yeah, so the best place to connect with me is my website. It's my name, jenbroyles.com. That's J-E-N-B-R-O-Y-L-E-S.com. And there's a link on my website to the Sacred Breath community if you want to learn more about that. Also, um, there's information on private breathwork coaching. If that's of interest to you, um, you can contact me through my website. And then I'm on all the social media platforms as well. On Instagram, I'm at Jen Broyles Health Coach. And on Facebook, if you search Jen Broyles, you should be able to find me. All right. So we're going to do a short 10-minute breathwork tutorial. And I'm going to explain just real quickly what we'll be doing. Um, so again, we'll be starting with the rhythmic diaphragmatic breathing. And the rhythm that we'll be breathing in is in for two and out for two. So it's a, it's a little faster pace. This is kind of an energizing style of breath work, um, but it's very balancing to the nervous system. So it's, it's also still great for, for reducing stress and kind of calming the nervous system. So you'll breathe in through the nose for two and out through the mouth for two. You'll hear counting and breathing in the music. It'll go in, two, out, two, in, two, out, two. And then we're gonna do two breath holds. The first breath hold, uh, when we get to that point, you'll hear me say, take a big breath fully in and fully out. And you'll exhale all the air in your lungs and hold your breath. And just hold your breath for as long as you can. If at any point you need to take a breath, just take a quick breath in through the nose and out through the mouth and continue to hold the breath. And do that as many times as you need during this breath hold. And then we'll go straight back into the rhythmic breathing. You'll hear the music pick up, you'll hear the counting start back, in two, out two, in two, out two. And then we'll do a second breath hold. And so you'll hear me say again, take a big breath fully in and fully out, exhaling all the air and holding your breath. Again, if you need to take a breath at any point, just take that quick inhale and exhale and continue to hold. And then this time, after, after we've held our breath for a little while on the exhale, I'm going to invite you to take a big breath fully in and hold your breath on the inhale. And at the same time, we're going to do what's called a mula bandha lock. So you're going to contract your pelvic floor muscles, kind of like your holding in your urine and just contract those muscles. And we are going to be moving energy. We're going to be moving some of this root chakra energy and imagine it going up the spine into the midbrain. And just hold your breath on the inhale while you're contracting up those pelvic floor muscles and visualize this energy moving up into the brain. And this is a very energizing and exciting experience. It's creating a rush of blood flow and oxygen to the brain. It helps stimulate those feel-good neurotransmitters of serotonin and dopamine. And so you'll just hold your breath here for a short period of time. And then I'll say exhale completely. And then you'll just go back to your normal relaxed breathing and we will be finished. So that's what we'll do. It'll take about 10 minutes. Um, make sure you're in a comfortable, safe space, no distractions. Don't do this if you're driving or anything like that. Um, you can do this sitting up or lying down. I'm going to start us off with just a real short, um, about minute, a minute and a half meditation, and we'll go straight into the breathing. All right. So here we go. With your eyes closed, imagine a sparkling white light entering your body from the top of your head every time you breathe in. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. This vibrant white light this positive, radiant energy. It's restorative, refreshing, healing, 
and uplifting. See this light flowing through the top of your head every time you breathe in. And see it flowing throughout your body. Filling your body with this healing, radiant white light. Continue to cultivate this light flowing throughout as we begin to breathe in beats. In through the nose, out through the mouth, Breathing in light. Imagine you're drawing in light all the way in through your nose, through your brain, sending a circuit of gold and white light all the way around your body activating healing, nourishing every cell, turning on your inner magnetism, your creative potential. Breathe in light. Breathe in light. Breathe out love. Breathe in light. Breathe out liberation. Breathe in healing light. Take a big breath fully in and fully out. <sighs> Exhaling all the remaining air in your lungs and holding your breath. Enjoy this moment of stillness as you go deep into a meditative state. Quick inhale and exhale. Continue to hold. Going back into that moment of deep relaxation. This allows the thought files to reassemble, giving you a sense of freedom, clarity, and joy. Bringing awareness to these good feelings and good sensations, to all this healing light energy brought into your body, healing and nourishing every cell as you go deeper and deeper within your own mind. Enjoy the bliss. Let's begin to breathe in beats. Breathe out love. 
just here being. Connect to the breath, the rhythm of life. Connect deeply to your higher self, divine intelligence. Connect to the breath. up the treasure house that lies within your heart, your connection to the universe and everything in it, your source of deep intuition, insight, love, breathe in light. Take a deep breath fully in and fully out. Exhaling all the air and holding your breath. Going back into that moment of deep stillness, inner bliss and meditation. As you connect to the essence of your soul you are transcendent. You are brilliant. You are limitless. You are free. You are infinite. This is your true nature. A place of no boundaries. A place where you are met by the divine. Fully embraced. Seen. Understood place where you can experience oneness, where all things become possible. When you get that bigger, just breathe, take a big breath, fully in. Hold, squeeze the mula bandha, contracting those pelvic floor muscles. Imagine that energy shooting up from your root chakra, up your spine, into the midbrain. Focus on your third eye. 
witness the healing white lights radiating. Hold your breath for as long as is comfortable. And then exhale with a sigh of good feelings. to normal and relaxed breathing. Coming back into the room, wiggling your fingers and toes. And in your own time, allowing your eyes to flutter open. Much love and light for your day ahead. Welcome back. And that's all for this episode. Once again, a thank you to Jen for everything she shared and for the guided breathwork tutorial. As usual, let me know your thoughts and suggestions. Message me at BE Energywear or through my website, beenergywear.com. And if you like this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, please share this podcast with your friends. I'm Brian, your host, and I'll talk to you again in the next episode.